neat about John Williams because he did not start as a film composer. He no. started as a jazz pianist. That's right. That's right. He Johnny did. Johnny Williams. Johnny Williams. Yeah. Uh, Johnny Williams Jr. Basically, because his dad was a mm -hmm. famous uh, yeah. percussionist. Yeah. Um, and uh, he did a lot of gigging in New York, um, and then he moved out with the family to Los Angeles, and just started as a session pianist in the studios. Right. Um, mm -hmm. And then he just started, you know, composers started throwing orchestrational yeah. gigs his way and, you yeah. know, yeah. the rest and is history. Right, right, right. It's so interesting how important jazz is, yeah. I think, for composition. Because Absolutely. Because a guy like John Williams, I think you could speak to some examples of this, but it seems like he uses a lot of jazz harmony. Absolutely. In his scores. Absolutely. And even um, in the scores that you wouldn't think to have those kind of harmonies, right. you know, this... this kind of thing is right. used quite often in, yeah. you know, Jurassic Park score, right, or, right. or if you listen to a yeah. kind of deal that you'll hear in a bit in like Raiders of the Lost Ark or something yeah. like that. Uh, but he'll find ways to frame it in a way where it's not yeah. jazzy on paper, right? but it's using that same harmonic language in, in an interesting way. Right. I remember the first time learning upper structures. Uh, I don't know how much you know about these upper structure triads, but I went, that's John Williams. Yeah, yeah, right, because he just uses it all the time. He uses them all the time, these, these triads up here. I mean, the, the rebel, you know, fanfare. That's what I have to say. Those are upper structures? Upper structures, yeah. all over the place. Yeah. And just with that pedal tone. Pedal tone, yeah. 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 It's so funny how we all, like, composers steal. Yes, yeah. they just. It's all it is. It's just yeah. like a wide tapestry, and it's just yeah. how you organize those materials. That's yeah. where the uniqueness comes into play. What about Lydian? Lydian. Lydian. I hear a lot of Lydian. When you played. Um, yeah, that's Lydian. Yeah, that's totally Lydian. That to me is like film score. Very like, you know, film score. A little bright. You know, it, it's, it has a brighter texture. Right. I was talking about modes today in my uh, history class and yeah. how certain emotions are attached to yeah. the modes because yeah. we're going through uh, music of antiquity and, yeah. um, um, and medieval music. And it's interesting how the Lydian mode has a different connotation mm -hmm. back at that time, which mm. had a more somber Quality. Oh really? Yeah, that's what they thought of it at the Oh, time. it's so bright. But it's and it's happy. we've associated for so long with yeah. that sort of bright. Yeah. It's that raised force. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. it has that need to like, you know, I see a little, little dog, a little yeah. terrier, just yeah. you know, scurrying yeah, across right. the street. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Um, you know, E. T. You know. Oh, so good. Yeah. You know yeah, yeah. that. Uses that thing just yeah. to give it that sort of uplift. Mm, that's cool. Do you feel like each mode has like like mixolydian? You know, if you think, you know, a lot of people associate with kind of blues. Bluesy, yeah, you yeah. Know. yeah. It has that little bluesy quality, Ooh, yeah. and especially if you want to have like that weird, yeah, yeah. that kind of thing, and you yeah. can crunchy, um, yeah. crunchy it up a bit. You can sometimes use like um, two modes at the same time mm. to create that kind yeah. of dissonance. Yeah. Um, I, I just finished writing a, an orchestral piece, and, um, and it's all built out of uh, the octatonic scale, mm -hmm. but I love treating it the in a major scale. kind of way. Okay. So uh, I'm using. Yeah, I call that one. But yeah. it's. So I'm using that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, it works. And so it's got Ooh, that sort of, cool. sort of Spanish y kind of feel. Yeah. Um, and it's got a little quirk to it, yeah. too, with yeah. the tritone and that shifty kind of thing. Interesting. That's cool. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's just using that as a great um, palette mm. to come up with these moods. Because you can find moods within moods mm. sometimes. I love that. My parents used to take us kids to the movies a lot. And naturally, I was smitten by the scores that mm -hmm. I uh, would. Uh, here in the in the film, uh, one in particular hook uh, by oh, John Williams, yeah. which is the I think that's uh, his best score. Can you play a little.
really good it's stuff. It's a magical score. It's a magical yeah, score, yeah. It, and it's almost like um, a sort of like a, a thesaurus on orchestration. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just beautifully orchestrated, and yeah. it, it, it left an indelible mark in my yeah. mind. Um, and so I started to slowly get into um, composing, mm. very, very slowly. As a teenager. Uh, as a teenager. Mm. Um, and, and that helped because I was doing a lot of arranging mm. all by ear mm. um, in church. What sealed the deal for me, at least for a compositional perspective, mm. was um, episode one, Star Wars episode mm. one. A friend from church recommended me to, because I told him about my interest in film music, yeah. and he said, check out Star Wars. And I wasn't really a Star Wars fan at the time. Yeah. I, was, I thought, space, sci-fi, not for me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, but I just fell in love with mm. the score. And I, at that time, I didn't know it was by the same man, John Williams. Mm. Um, and then I just been, I was able to put two and two together. That's when the internet started to become a thing. Mm. Um, and I had to look it up. You yeah, know. yeah. <laughs> Get that, kids. Okay. <laughs> that was the time before the internet. Yeah. Um, and it, it, it just, it, that yeah. was my path. I felt I just needed to become a composer. It's just wow. mainly because there's such a big palette yeah, to right. use. Right. Um, and to right. help evoke mm. so many emotions. Yeah, I would say it's the most important part of the emotional side of the film like if you listen to a score or watch a film without the music you really <laughs> go oh my gosh <laughs> different story yeah it's huge yeah different story it's a different story right and it's it, it's also um, just knowing how to pace the music knowing when to put it in the film and most importantly when not to put it in there oh right right to give the audience some yeah. ear breathing room i'm curious what um from the going back to star wars what was the piece that sealed the deal for you in the in the first film, there's the, something you could play oh for boy. the students. There was uh, I'll play, I, I'll play a theme from the second film. But to comment about the first film, because it's hard to, to play it on the piano because it's a textural thing. Yeah. Um, as Johnny knows, uh, I'm a, a composer, so I'm so used to dealing with so many yeah. colors yeah. outside of the piano. Yeah. And there was this one beautiful scene um, in the first film. This is Phantom Menace, by the way, um, and. Uh, it's a scene with Jar Jar and Queen Amidala and Coruscant. Mm. Um, she's sort of uh, looking out into the cityscape of Coruscant. Mm. And it's just this really quiet tremolo on the harp mm. with tremolo strings. Mm. It's all it is just to evoke that emotion of, wow. of despair that she's having wow. at that moment. Mm. It, it was just a, left an indelible mark. Mm. But in general, with Williams' scores to Star Wars, They've got this sort of Wagnerian, now Wagner is like this famous 19th century operatic composer who developed the concept of the leitmotif. So mm -hmm. that's a, a, a theme um, written for a person, place, thing, concept. Mm. And Williams borrowed I that I didn't know concept. Wagner developed that. Yeah. The, the theme is based on the person. The person. That's cool. Because he, you know, yeah. if you're interested, it's yeah. a long journey, but yeah. if you're ever interested in listening to the ring cycle, uh -huh. just for uh, uh, operas, uh, they're about 16 hours long. They've yeah. got like 90 something themes for yeah. all those characters and places. Mm. Um, and Williams decided to use that model for these things. Mm. Uh, and what's so fascinating is how he uh, constructs these things. Mm. Um, one of the uh, themes from the second of the prequel films, mm -hmm. the love theme, the, um, let's see. Pete. Mm. And one of the interesting things about it, one is it's sort of melodic motion. It's mm -hmm. kind of asymmetrical mm -hmm. in a way. Mm -hmm. So you got this long, then it moves. Interesting. And, and it's describing that sort of across the stars is the name of the piece. Mm. The star crossed lovers of Anakin and Padme. Yeah, yeah. Um, and seeing how that. Um, 
relationship is kind of doomed to fail. Mm. Um, and so you have this sort of cyclical rushing into this loving relationship and then pulling yeah. back. Mm. Um, but the interesting thing about it, there's no real end to that melody. Mm. It just keeps going in its modulation. So if mm. I were continuing on. So it just keeps with those that those two mm. ideas over and over and mm. over again, and it's describing the this sort of cyclical relationship that is just never, yeah. you know, going yeah. to sort of um, come into its own. Not grow into the next phase. That's so interesting. That's the beauty of music. It's storytelling. Yeah, that's cool. You said something really fascinating: symmetry of melody. Mm -hmm. It's not something I think so much about, but but there is a symmetry to melody. The sort of the long and the short. Yeah, it's kind of a pull. Right, a which push is pull kind of it's thing. push pull. But that's what storytelling is. Good Absolutely. storytelling is push and pull. So Absolutely. that's cool. Yeah. I, I never actually thought of that. Hey, thanks for watching. And if you enjoyed this interview, I encourage you to check out the full-length interview at pianowithjohnny.com, where we talk about a ton of other valuable tools, tips, and tricks on jazz piano playing. So I'll put a link to that below, and I'll see you in the next one.